Okay, so I'm going, as I don't know how to do this properly, I will have the the chat in the phone um, and then just recording the screen like this. So as the topic of today is, uh, one moment I'm going to As the topic of today is not going to be very long, I decided to also include the geologic time scale in this um, this stream. One moment. So this um, this kind of stream is my idea for this kind of stream is um, I want to do some powerpoints of art. This is um, a placeholder. So I will do a um, powerpoint. Using the pictures and the, the schemes. No, this folder, no. No. This So this is um, document. This is the summaries of all my art history videos, and I thought in doing a simple PowerPoint using this information with pictures and transform this PowerPoint into video. So it is like a kind of video um, that works as summary of the period. So for prehistory, it's going to be very short, but then there are others that. Uh, and that are much much longer so future streams are going to be longer so for today uh prehistory but before i'm going to talk about a, a bit uh, about the geological eras so in these past days i did a summary so obviously i'm not going to comment everything here just the very basic things and I think better have a uh, this one is fine, pretty fine. And in fact, I think I'm going to, for the sake of explanation, let's see if there is a table that is better. Okay, this one. Camera, okay. I have it written in, in a notebook. This is a, a very basic scheme. I think this one is better. There are some little difference, but this one is better. I'm going to have this over it also. And what I wanted is this here. So at the beginning is the 
super young well uh, about the translations yes it's super young not very sure how it is correctly pronounced but anyway the super eon the precambrian it is basically the the birth of earth the creation of earth and the beginning of life so it is in the proteseroic when life starts in these ones the hadian and archean are basically how the heart is forming but mm, nothing about life starts here there is a little bit first on controversial li living organisms prokaryote arche archaea and bacteria pro uh, prokaryotic organisms are the uh, they are the very simple organisms like uh, as it says here the bacteria viruses but nothing nothing complex and in the protozoic is where it starts already to be some uh, complex life but still uh, microscopic and uh, something here interesting first uncontroversial eukaryotes as you can see here eukaryotes are the more complex cells and prokaryotic well here Never mind. Um, so the summary: Hadi, ha, uh, Hadian from four point six million years ago, the formation of Earth. Then the archaic. Uh, 4,000 million years ago, the evolution of of Earth, uh, movement of tectonic plates, and then the pro um, Proterozoic. Proterozoic, yes, I'm saying well. Um, well, life starts appearing, but very very simple. Uh, 2,500 million years ago. Expansion of cyanobacteria. Not sure if it is pronounced like that. And in this time exists a supercontinent called Rodinia, as it appears here. Rodinia, supercontinent persists. I don't know if it appears earlier. But over this time it is the Rodinia supercontinent I'm going to enter. So this is how Earth was in this time. Very interesting. This West Africa, Madagascar, very far away. Okay, this is enough about Rodinia. And then what changes in here at the end? Um, well, I read literally supercontinent Rodinia stays, and then th there are the eras Paleoprotoceroic, Mesoprotoceroic, and Neoprotoceroic. And at the end of Ediacaric. Ediacaran, this one at the end of Ediacaran period, the pluricellular organisms evolved 635 million years ago, and at the end of the Precambrian exists the supercontinent Panotia. So let's pay some attention to this part. Panotia here. Beginning of Pan African orogeny leading to the formation of the short lived Ediacaran supercontinent Panotia, which by the end of the period breaks off into Laurentia, Baltica, Siberia, and Gondwana. 
more super continents North American let's check this one also this is important uh, the ozone layer forms in creating oceanic mineral levels why ozone layer uh, forms and this is important because before this the organisms couldn't live outside the water because the the rays of the sun had the uh, radiation because the radiation but with the ozone layer then radiation is the problem of the radiation is kind of solved and the organisms can go to the surface so this is the panotia. I'm going one up. Okay, let's start with the the ion, the Phanerozoic ion. So here the super ion doesn't have any name. But just think that we started formation of the moon. You see here at the very very beginning formation of the moon, probably from a giant impact. The giant impact hypothesis, sometimes called the big splash or the Theia impact, suggests that the moon formed from the ejecta of a collision between the proto Earth and a Mars sized planet, approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Formation of Earth, early bombardment phase, begins, formation of the Sun. So, 4.5 six million years ago and the Phanerozoic starts um 542 million ago so there are many thousands of years without complex life Actually, like um, four four thousand million years between the formation of Earth and the start of complex life. Paleozoic is for the visible life. This is like not only the microscopic life exists. Um, Pangea exists between the two first eras of this eon. So Pangea starts, well, I, I should have started with this. Super eon, eon era, period, epoch, age. So these are uh, the, the divisions. I'm going to focus more, well, super eon, just the basic at the beginning, and then the most important are the eon, the era, and the, the, the period, and the epoch. These four are the most important. So, uh, in the ion, the Phanerozoic ion, and then start in the Paleozoic. So, the Phanerozoic ion is divided in Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. I'm reading literal Paleozoic, the uh, the time of the aquatic organisms, and it lasts for around 300 million years. Then the Mesozoic, the age of the reptiles. Mm, this is the time of the dinosaurs, and it lasts for around 200 million years. And then the Cenozoic is the time of the mammals and mother plants um, and it lasts from 66 years 
66 million years ago to the present time. And then uh, let's go with the money divisions. There are many interesting things in the Paleozoic. In fact, for me, the Paleozoic is much more interesting than the Mesozoic. So, again, I'm going to focus only on this. And about the, the epoch, I'm just going to focus in the last one, in the Cenozoic. I don't think the epoch are really that important in in this uh, for this one because they uh, basically mean uh, they make reference to the to a place like for example this Mississippi and Pennsylvania or just early middle late but then the others have more interesting names I think and are worth checking so starting from Paleozoic Remember Paleozoic, the time of the aquatic organism. Cambrian. Cambrian starts with animal uh, animal life in the seas. Let's see what interesting things are here. Um, major diversification, life in the Cambrian explosion as oxygen levels increase. Numerous fossils, most modern animal phyla, including arthropod, ar ar arthropods, mollusks. So arthropods are like these ones, mollusks, annelids, echinoderms, hemichordates, and chordates, um, sponges, initially abundant, then bunnies. Fish are, are Theopods, including trilobites. Let's check this one because this is an interesting creature. Trilobites are a group of extinct marine arthropods that form the class Trilobita. Um, in, in this explanation for of the Paleozoic, um, well, all the another another three ones. Then I'm going to show some interesting creatures. So these are the trilobits. Divergence and extinction. Trilobits are incredible diversification over time. For such a long lasting group of animals, it is no surprise that trilobite evolutionary history is marked by a number of extinction events where some groups perished and surviving groups diversified to fill ecological niches with comparable and unique adaptations. Precambrian and Cambrian. Okay, I think this is enough for the little bit. Mm, little bit. Priapulid worms. Inarticulate brachiopods. So very basic life, although the the trilobits are don't seem too too simple. But what is the size of this animal? Because by this they look very big. Okay, I'm just going to search trilobit size. Um, I don't think this is real. This, well, this is very big. Yes, this is very big. Much bigger than I thought. Well, I don't think this is simple life at all. This is clearly more complex. Anomalocarids um, are dominant and giant predat predators with many current fauna, diode, crustacea, and mollusk, diversify algae and fungi continue to present day, fish vertebrates from earlier chordate. Atmospheric. 
carbon dioxide content roughly in present day mm, life is starting to expand on land this is the important thing life is starting to expand on land in the form of multicellular green algae and arthropods three extinction events occur the first and last of which wipe out many of the animal carries arthropod plots yes the extinction events will happen Man, there are many extinction events okay that is the cambrian then the ordo ordovician i have it here written in spanish so i'm having a hard time with the pronunciation but ordovician uh, the invertebrate animals are the ones who uh, have the domain the domination <clears throat> the great ordovician view of diversification event was an evolutionary radiation of animal life through the Ordovician period. Of course, as plankton increase in number, invertebrates diversify into many new types, many new types, early corals, uh, bivalves, cephalopods, trilobites, ostracods, biozoans, uh, well. Mysterious tentaculi dance. What is this? Tentaculi dance. I was thinking in tentaculides. <clears throat> Interesting. Like I was thinking a kind of I don't remember the name in English. Oh, octopus. I was thinking a kind of octopus. Fish Eurypterids and Ostracoderm fish appear, later probably giving rise to the jawed feeds at the end of the period. Let's check this one. So we have an idea of the kind of animals in here. First, uncontroversial terrestrial fungi and fully terrestrialized plants. I say it at the end of this period, as well as a series of mass extinction events, killing off some cephalopods and many brachiopods, and killing a lot. And this is one of the big major extinctions, the extinction of the Ordovician Silurian extinction. But still not the greatest of all of them. Greatest later we'll see the greatest one. Okay, let's continue to the Silurian. Silurian, this is Silurian era, I think. Silurian. No, Silurian period. Silurian period. I still get a bit confused about this. Silurian period. It is uh, when the first animal with aerial breathing uh, appear. Aerial breathing uh, means animals who can breathe outside water. Autumn layer thickens spear vascular plants and fully terrestrializes arthropods, including insects and arachnids. Uh, Eurypteris diversify rapidly, becoming widespread and dominant through jawed fishes, along with the astracoderms and to roam the seas. Trilobites and mollus diverse. Three minor extinction events, some echinoderms co extinct. Mm. The evening of Caledonian orogeny, collision between Laurentia, Baltic, and one of the Formerly small Gondwanian terrains. Remember that these are the continents. Laurentia, Baltic are the continents. Four hills in England. Right. Also continue into the Bonian period as the Acadian. Mm. Ice house period. And then so. Late despair of the Tartan in late Ordovician. Mm. 
the Andean Saharan gladiation occurred during the Paleozoic. Yes, because in the past the Sahara was not a desert. I, rem I don't remember exactly where I read it, but I read that in the Sahara were found bones from fishes. Uh, fish bones, Sahara. Let me confirm that. Possibilities fish bones in the Sahara Desert. Ancient fish bone. Let's see this one. I don't read it in a page like this, but I don't remember if I, if I read it or I watched it in a documentary. But the remains of fish hidden thousands of years ago. Researchers studying fossils found in Sahara rock shelter dating back from more than 10,000 years have uncovered fish bones that could serve as a record of the region gradual shift from vibrant savanna to arid desert. Well, it's not a uh, very surprising discovery. Uh, I mean, the continents were changing all the time, so. Well, this concept of snow wall earth. A uh, period before was Snow Wall Earth means that the whole Earth was uh, frozen. And um, I think for the Snow Wall Earth, Snow Wall Earth, it is much better to see pictures because it's much better, much better to imagine. So it will be something like this. So that's the Silurian. Um, the next one, the Devonian, is when pieces with, uh, I don't know how to translate this, pieces and amphibious um, appear. Let's see if I see the how this state here. Um, Especially copos, ferns, seed plants, seed ferns from earlier prehium ferns, fish trees, and fish winged insects. Um, fish fully coiled cephalopod with a former group very abundant, trilobites and ostracoderms decline while jawed fishes and acanthodians and early carpinaceous fins proliferate some low finest fish um that's i'm going for google translator because i want to translate something scales this that what the word pieces with scales pieces with with hard scales and amphibian Amphibians, it is said like that. Amphibians uh, appear. Mm. Still want something interesting more. Virginia or Acadian Roxeny. A series of extinction events, including the massive Kelwasser and Hangenberg ones, wipe out many alphitar corals, sponges, mollusks, trilobites. Well, extinctions all the time. And it is with the uh, next, so it is the extinction of the uh, the bony carboniferous. This is other of the um, greatest extinctions. Uh, carboniferous is very interesting. Uh, there are another word. Ferns, okay. Uh, forests of ferns, reptiles, and um, winged insects. And um, in the Carboniferous is where you find the Meganeura, I think. Winged insects radiate suddenly, some especially Protodonata and Paleodictyoptera. Paleodic of them as well some millipedes and scorpions become very large this is the time where the insects are like monsters because they are very big 
see this. It's insane. And yes, this is the Meganeura. Meganisoptera. Meganisoptera is an extinct order of very large, two gigantic insects, which might formally be called griffin flies. The order was formerly named Protodonata uh, for their similar appearance and supposed relation to modern Odonata. The runs in, in Paleozoic late Carboniferous to late Permian times through most were only slightly larger than mo modern dragonflies. The order includes the largest known insect species, such as the late Carboniferous Meganeura Mongi and the even larger early Permian Meganeuropsis Permiano, with wingspans from up to 71 centimeters. Insane. Mm. Just for some artists, artists and uh, representations. Just insane. Okay, more interesting things here. Higher atmospheric oxygen levels, ice age continues to the early Permian, Gonial Tithers, Rachobos, first good wood life, wood lice, what is this? Wood lows is a crustacean from the monopiletic suborder on Istia with uh, it is this the the box who eat wood? They get their names from often being found in old wood. <laughs> yes, I know these books. Uh, Euro America. Collides with Gondwana. Hmm. Which forms Laurasia and the Uralian orogeny. Okay, and this is important. Amphibians spread in Euro America, with some becoming the first amniotes. Amniotes are a clade of tetrapod vertebrate that comprise sauropsids and synapsids. They are distinguished by a membrane amnion protecting the embryo and a lack of a larval state. Thanks to these amniotes like eggs on land or retain them within the mother. Carboniferous rainforest collapse occurs, initiating a dry climate with powers amniotes over amphibians. Amniotes diversify rapidly into synapses par para reptiles. Uh, well, Rhizodons remain common before they die out at the end of the period. First SARS. Carboniferous. Next one is the Permian, and this is the last, uh, last one. Yes, this is the last one of the Paleozoic. The Permian is the. At the end, there is a mass extinction, and this one is the yes, this this one is the greatest mass extinction. So land masses you need into supercontinent Pangaea. Let's check this. The supercontinent Pangaea in the early Mesozoic. Pangaea was a continent that existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic eras. It assembled from earlier continental units during the Carboniferous and began to break at the end of the Triassic and beginning of the Jurassic. In contrast to the present herd and its distribution of continental mass, Pangea was centered on the equator and surrounded by the super ocean Panthalassa. Panthalassa, also known as the Panthalassic Ocean or Panthalassan Ocean, 
was the super ocean that surrounded the supercontinent Pangaea, the, the latest in a series of supercontinents in the history of Earth. This is very interesting, I didn't know this. Pangaea is the most recent supercontinent to have existed and the first to be reconstructed by geologists. Pangaea. The Pacific Plate began forming. Very interesting. That gives me a lot of ideas. <laughs> End of Permo, Carboniferous Glaciation, gla uh, glaciation Hot and Dry Climate, a possible drop in oxygen levels. Uh, synapses become widespread and dominant while par parareptiles and ternos, pondyl, amphibias remain common, with the latter probably giving rise to modern amphibians in this period. In the mid Permian, lycophytes and heavy are heavily replaced by ferns and, plant and seed plants. Beetles and flies evolve. By the way, I don't know, I, I just hope there's some. Yes. It's working fine. And the very large arthropods and not the trapos, the the tetrapodomorph ghost stings, marine life flourishes in one side of reef. Chrome reptiles arise from earlier diapsids. Permian Triassic extinction event. This is where I want to go. Oh, cool. Also, extinction and Capitanian extinction and Permian Triassic extinction occur one after another, more than 80% eight eight, uh, 80 of life on Earth becomes extinct in the latter most, including most retarian plankton, corals. But in fact, uh, the Permian Triassic extinction, I have that. that and 96% of life disappears. So why it says 80%? Permian Triassic extinction event. It is the third most severe known extinction event with the extinction of 57% um, of biological families, 83 of genera, 81 of marine species, and 70 of terrestrial vertebrate species. The largest known mass extinction of insects. This one, this table is insane. Oripterid, 7%. Might have become. Uh, might have become extinct shortly before uh, ostracods, trilobites, 7% in the clean since the Devonian, only two genera living before the extinction. Brachiopods, almost all. Acanthodians in the clean since the Devonian, with only one living family. Extinct class of Nastomers, typically considered a paraphyletic group. They are currently considered to represent a grade of various fish lineage leading up to the extent of the kind of fishes. Anthozoans, tabulate and rugose colors died out, plastoids, an extinct type of stemmed echinoderm. Well, the most terrible mass extinction ever. Okay, now let's go to the Mesozoic. The, this is the time of the reptiles and something I need to translate. And sea gods, okay. Time of reptiles and sea gods. This is the time of the dinosaurs. And it is divided in the Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. 
So, the Triassic. Here there are the Arcos... Ar I'm going to pronounce it probably bad, but anyway. The Arcosaurs, Mammals, and Crocodiles. Ar okay, here is the word. Arcosaurs, dominant on land as pseudosuchians and as pseudosuchian and in the air as Peter oh did yeah, i was reading bad archosaurus but they are called pseudosuchians in land and petosaurs in the air Arch archosauria it's a clade of the absid with beards are crocodilians as the only living representatives Archosaurs are broadly classified as reptiles in the cladistic sense of term, which includes peers. Extinct archosaurs include not avian, dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and extinct relatives of crocodilians. Dinosaurs also arise from bipedal archosaurs, ichthyosaurs, and nothosaurs. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of dinosaurs. Uh, Kinodons become small and nocturnal and eventually become the first true mammals, while other remaining synapses die out. Rhinchosaurs, also common, seed ferns. Um, let's see what more. Keratidan amnoids, extremely common. Modern corals. First starfish. Carnial pluvial event. Uh, uh, carnial pluvial event occurs, allowing the fish dinosaurs and lepidosaurs to radiate. Triassic, Jurassic, obviously, there is an extinction. Uh, Triassic, Jurassic extinction event occurs, whipping out all the conodons and the last party reptiles. Many marine reptiles, all cro uh, crocopolans, except. Uh, except crocodilomorphs, pedosaurs, and dinosaurs, and many um, monoids, including the whole Teratidia. Teratitida. First, diadoms. What is this? Diadoms are a major group of algae, especially microalgae, found in the oceans. Okay. Jurassic. Climate, well. Jurassic is the time of dinosaurs, small mammals, uh, bears, and lizards, hypnosperms, and ferns. Climate becomes humid again. Hypnosperm, especially conifers, thigat, and thigatoids, and ferns are common. Dinosaurs, including sauropods, carnosaurs, stegosaurs, and uh, coelosaurus, became dominant land vertebrates. Mammals diversify into slaughterids. Australosperidans, Eutriconodons, Multituberculates, Symmetrodons, Dryolestids, and Boreosperidans. But mostly remain small. Fierce bears, lizards, snakes, and turtles. Fish brown algae, rice, shrimps, crabs. Lobsters, Plesiosaurus, the bears, and Plesiosaurus are an order or clade of extinct Mesozoic marine reptiles. Mm, Rhynchocephalians through the world, bivalves and monoids, and belemnids are abundant. Mm, let's see what more. Breakup of Pangea into Laurasia and Gondwana with the later also breaking in two main parts, the Pacific and Arctic Oceans form. Tethys Ocean forms atmospheric carbon dioxide levels three to four times the present day levels. Crocodilomorphs seek out an aquatic lifestyle. Mesozoic marine revolution continues from late Triassic. Tentaculitans disappear. Okay, let's go deeper into the kinds of dinosaurs just for the sake of being interesting. Dinosaurs are a diverse group of reptiles in the clay dinosauria, including sauropods. Let's let's open each one. Sauropods, I think these ones are the ones of the long neck. Yes. Sauropod. 
In fact, one moment. So back in time when I was doing my my research for paleontological art, I used both this kind of dinosaur toys uh, just for having them as references. So this one will be the sauropods, the one of the long neck. I don't remember very well what it's what one, uh, but this will be a good remembering the sauropod is that one. Carnosaurus, let's see this one. Allosaurus, uh, so this one, I think this one will be the Allosaurus. I'm going to show them closer. So this one is the uh, saur sauropod. If I uh, sauropod, yes, this one the sauropod. This one the allosaurus. This one allosaurus. Allosaurus there, well. Carnosauria, this is the division. Stegosaurus, okay, I have also this one. Stegosaurus, I think is this one. Yes. This one is the Stegosaurus. I hope the that little toy seem more or less good. That the Stegosaurus and Coelurosaurus. I think I don't have this one. I'm just missing two, and I don't think. Well, I'm not missing two. I'm missing other more. One moment. I forgot to bring this one. This one is the Petosaurus. That is not really a dinosaur. Uh, if you remember, the Petosaurus starts in the Triassic. Is and uh, no, I got this. No, the uh, this one, Petosaurus. Petosaurus is the flying ones. Let's see if there is a good picture. This one. This one is also fine. So that one. Coelurosauria. Mm. No, this one is not what I what I remain. And while these are mamas, precious hours. Okay, let's go to the Jurassic now. Ah, no, to the Cretaceous. To the Cretaceous. Cretaceous is the, the time of flower, flower plants and insects. There are dinosaurs, crocodiles, primitive birds, marsupials, mammals, uh, placentary mammals. It is said like that. 
mamíferos, placentarios, placental mamas, ok. So, Cretaceous, flowering plants proliferate after developing many features since the Carboniferous, along with new types of insects, while other seed plants, hymnosphere, and seeds ferns decline. More modern teleos feast begin to appear, and monodoids, belemnite, rudis, halberd, well, many common things, many new types of dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus, the more, the more famous. I have this thing. This is from Jurassic Park. So, this the Tyrannosaurus. This one will be similar to Tyrannosaurus, but it's not exactly the same. And this one is more accurate, I suppose. At least the skeleton. More accurate, I think. Oh, and something I just read. Um, this depict. These are the pictures of dinosaurs that you can find. Uh, are like this, but it is believed that they had uh, feathers. Like for example, this Alberto Sauris sculpture from Royal Tyrrell Museum depicted with featherless skin. And I can prof I can go deeper in that topic a bit later. Well, in fact, now I can go deeper. Um, here, uh, dinosaur feather. So, dinosaurs will be something like this. Finally, you can see dinosaurs in all their feather at glory. Dinosaurs from giant reptiles to one blooded feather creatures. How our understanding of what they look like has changed. So, dinosaurs were something like this with feathers. Feathers came before the beard. They look very weird, but it's what the scientists believe. I suppose the researchers, uh, the researchers are still going. Should Sikhi artists be giving dinosaurs feathers? Okay, so that is the Tyrannosaur and Titanosaur. Mm, as the most recent uh, Adrosaurs, Ceratopsis. Okay, this one. Ceratopsis. Um, no good pictures here. I'm going to search. This one is this one. There are topsy die. This one that looks like a rhino. And then I'm missing one, but I'm not sure what kind is this one. Um, Adrosaurus. Maybe this one. Um, no. I think this is not that one. This is like dog. Definitely, I think no. Let's see if I find what one is that. The dinosaur, definitely not. A bourbon land will crocodilians appear in water and probably cause the last temnospendil to die out. And mosasaurs and modern times of shark appear in the 
see the revolution started by marine reptiles and shark reaches its peak through which your source vanished three million years after being heavily reduced at the Bonalelli event. Toothed and toothless avian birds coexist with petosaurs, modern monotremes, metatarian, including marsupials who, em who migrate to South America and Neutherian, including placenta, lepticina, mammals appear, fish, terrestrial crabs, many snakes become terrestrial. Here more, uh, further breakup of Gondwana creates South America, Afro, Arabia, Antarctica, Oceania, Madagascar, Greater India, and the South Atlantic, Indian and Antarctic Oceans, and the islands of the Indian Ocean. Beginning of Laramid and Sevier. Orogenies as the Rocky Mountains atmospheric oxygen and carbon dioxide levels similar uh, atmospheric oxygen and carbon dioxide levels similar to present day. Agitarks disappears, climate climate initially warm, but later it cools. So no idea what is that last dinosaur, but anyway. And then it, there is the Cretaceous Paleoher. Let's see how it is said. Uh, Paleocene. Cretaceous Paleogen extinction. And uh, let's see. If I'm going to search for it. Since this one is also an important extinction. Cretaceous Paleogen extinction. Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, this one. Um, was a sudden mass extinction of three quarters of the plant and animal species of her on Earth, with the exception of some ectothermia species such as the sea turtles and crocodilians, not the troubles uh, within more than 25 kilograms survived. It marked the end of the Cretaceous period and with it the Mesozoic Era while heralding the beginning of the Cenozoic era, which continues to this day. As originally proposed uh, by a team of scientists led by Luis Alvarez, Alvarez, it is not generally thought that this extinction was caused by the impact of a massive comet or asteroid, which devastated the global environment. Mm. Well, there is a lot to see here, just, you know, how the dinosaurs disappear. Dinosaur was among the dinosaurs living on Earth before the extinction. And well, the evidence are the craters and such. It's a very interesting topic, but I have to continue. Okay, so continue. Now, entering in the Cenozoic era, after this extinction of the dinosaurs, the Cenozoic is the time of the mammals and mother plants. Divided in many, many epochs. Well, the three uh, in these eras, the three, no, periods. Three periods, the Paleogen, Paleogen, Neogen, and Quaternary. The Quaternary probably will disappear. And like the name Quaternary, since before it was called Tertiary or something like that. Um, well, whatever. Uh, the Paleogen and the time of the first mammals. Uh, First, insectivorous small mammals, and they are placental. So it's like the the babies are inside the body of the woman of the of the female. 
um, not in X as in the past. And this is divided in the Paleocene, Paleocene, Eocene, and Oligocene. I'm not gonna um, go deeper, in, very, very deep into this, just going uh, through this very quick. Uh, so in Paleo, in Paleocene, start with the Cyclog impact with the, well, this is the, my, the, the extinction. We've been out unknown avian dinosaurs and pedrosaurs, most marine reptiles and other vertebrates, mod cephalopods. <coughs> well, uh, climate tropical mammals and bears diversify rapidly into a number of lineages following the extinction event. Mm, first large birds and mammals. Terror birds, what is? Oh, yes, the terror birds. And mammals, alpine orogeny in Europe and Asia begins. First, Proboscidians and Placelapiformes. Some marsupials migrate to Australia. Then the, in, in the Eocene, here this divided in many, many uh, different epochs. No, not epoch, in periods. Um, let's see, something to say here. Greater India collides with Eurasia and starts Himalayan orogeny, while Eurasia completely separates from North America, creating the North Atlantic Ocean. Moderate cooling climate, archaic mammals flourish and continue to develop during, during the epoch, appearance of several modern mammal families. Um, primitive whales and sea goats uh, diversify after returning to water. Birds continue to diversify. Birds, kelp, dripodolons, bears, and simians. Hellenic orogeny begins in Greece and Aegean Sea. Grande Copure extinction start the, of widespread Antarctic gladiation and glaciation. Rapid evolution and diversification of fauna, especially mammals. Major evolution and dispersal of modern types of flowering plants. Okay. About the Neogene. It is the Miocene and Pliocene, the, the division of the epochs. Uh, in the Miocene orogeny and the northern hemisphere, start of Kaikoura orogeny forming southern Alps. Uh, with spread forests slowly draw in massive amounts of carbon dioxide, gradually lowering the level of atmo atmospheric carbon dioxide. Modern beard and mammal families become recognizable. Mm, let's see what's more. Grasses become a big ancestor of apes, including humans. Remember that Afro Arabia collides with Eurasia, fully forming the Alpid belt and closing the Tethys Ocean. At the same time, Afro, -Ara Afro Arabia splits into Africa and West Asia. So here is where the Ap apes uh, begin. Middle Miocene climate, autumn. Middle Miocene climate optimum temporarily provides a warm climate. Extinctions in Middle Miocene disruption decreasing shark diversity. First hippos, ancestor of the ancestor of great apes. Messinian event with Ebersaline lakes, and uh, that's Crevons and North Marsupial Mediterraneans who extinct. After separating from gorilla ancestor, chimpanzee and human ancestor gradually separate. Chimpanzee human last common ancestor is the last common ancestor shared by the extant Homo and Pan genera of Ominini. Due to complex hybrid specialization, it is not currently possible to give a precise estimate of the age of this ancestral population. Well, Pliocene. Greenland ice sheet 
develops as the cold slowly intensifies toward the Pleistocene. Atmospheric oxygen and carbon dioxide content reaches present day levels with land masses also reach their current locations. The Isthmus of Panama, Panama joins the North and South America with allowing a faunal interchange. Australopithecus common in, is common in East Africa. Australopithecus, the first human. Australopithecus is a genus of early hominins that existed in Africa during the late Pliocene and early Pleistocene. The genera Homo emerged within Australopithecus as sister to Australopithecus, well, whatever. And then Quaternary divided in Pleistocene and Holocene. In Pleistocene, parts of Quaternary glaciation and unstable climate raise of Pleistocene megafauna and Homo habilis. Okay, let's stop here a little bit. Pleistocene megafauna is these big animals. It's a set of large animals that lived in the earth during the Pleistocene epoch and became extinct during the Quaternary extinction event. Megafauna are any animals with an adult body weight of over 45 kilograms. Here some some of fauna. Marsupial lion skeleton. Further calling of the climate, the spread of Homo erectus, misplaced of in transitional course, rise of Homo sapiens. Emil intergracial last glacial period ending with younger Drira, Stoba eruption, Pleistocene megafauna extinction. Climate stabilized, current interglacial and all uh, and well, here you are already in Holocene, climate stabilized, current interglacial and on Holocene extinction begins, sea level flooding of um, Dower and Sundaland, Sahara Desert forms. Neolithic agriculture, Bronze Age, and creating industrial carbon dioxide. Well, and th here uh, we are already entering in present times. Not very present, but I think after all this time, it is pretty present. Well, um, I could mention some. Animals of this megafauna, like, and uh, let me see the I'm not sure if it is translated into that, but I'm going to try. Like this one, the holy rhinos, extinct holy rhinos, were a victim of climate change. What, well, of course, the sorry, sorry, good. Uh, not this sour dude. This sour dude. Uh, the, the sour dude tiger. Let's see, some skeleton. And obviously the mammoth, the holy mammoth. Here are some examples of the megafauna. And then it is the start of prehistory. So I'm going to change this into um, human evolution. Just going very, very quick in this. I don't want to, to make this extremely longer, extremely long. Um, well, 
will reach this part. Um, for now, I just want Okay, this is going to be fine. Human evolution. Um, Australopithecus homo habilis. Homo, well, homo ergaster will be here in between. Homo erectus. Homo antecessor will be in the middle here. Homo, um, homo sapiens. Homo neardentalensis, yes. So basically this. And then per just here i will already start with this but just going very quick a quick summary uh periods are divided in stone age and metal age in stone age it is paleolithic uh, mesolithic and neolithic paleolithic and uh, humans are uh, hunters and gatherers and nomads and there there are created small sculptures and reliefs and of course the cave art one example of art is altamira caves and in neolithic the humans are agri uh, well how did you say this farmers well the humans are farmers and uh shepherds let's see how it is Um, I'm not sure if this is the correct word I would use, but anyway, like they carry the the cattle, and they are uh, or what I don't know, sedentary. Okay, they are sedentary. Uh, megalithic constructions. One example is Stonehenge, and then in the um, Middle Ages, it is divided in copper age, bronze age, and uh, iron age. Uh, examples in Hallstatt and Latene, I'll read that part. Example of the culture is the cells. And then as a special mention, I always include uh, the Iberian Peninsula, maybe because I'm Spanish and it's how I studied it. But anyway, it's some uh, pre-Roman cultures. Like the Argar, the Tartessos, the Iberos, and some constructions of Balearic Islands. After finishing with the PowerPoint, I'll talk a bit about mythology. Um, this is why I have this open it, but I'm saving this for the last. So, what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to have it everything ready. Mm. These are my folders of pictures. Like I have here, I have uh, art pictures from when I was doing my art history videos and such. As this is going to be for my art history youtube channels <clears throat> and then i i'm just going to copy this and put some pictures prehistoric mm. art Prehistoric art begins in the Stone Age and then continues into the Metal Age. A stone Age is from approximately 1.2 million years ago. Um, I want that point, but yeah, the point is delayed. I don't know how to. How can I put that point? Uh, maybe like this. I don't know how to put that point. Anyway. Maybe there is a easy way. I 
I'm uh, pretty new with this open office version, so. style no maybe this this let's i'm going to try i have no idea no idea well i'm going to let it like this and maybe i research in other moment i don't want to keep this in the stream okay let's see this the first images are about the evolution of humankind there are many genres of homos naming the australopithecus homo habilis homo ergaster homo erectus homo antecessor homo sapiens cromagnon and homo sapiens Lucy is considered the first homo. These primitive groups of humans believed in spirits. The salmon was the intermediary. Okay, so then I have to put pictures and okay, this shift insert. Okay. No, but see if insert makes a copy paste, and I don't want a copy paste. Anyway, I have to research that. Um, this, okay, this I can ignore. And see what pictures are these. Okay, these last these pictures I think are the best for this purpose. Um I put this one. And this one in this. It doesn't matter that the text in the picture is in Spanish. What's the most important is. I'm going to edit this a bit. Evolution of humankind. Okay. And now Paleolithic. Paleolithic humans were hunters, gatherers, nomads, cultures very small and reliefs, and that sex bonds with reliefs. The most known piece is the Venus of Willendorf, a, thin, a symbol of fecundity. Others are the Venus of Lespook, Venus of Grimaldi, Venus of Lauser, or Venus of Brassenpoe. Painting. It is rock painting, naming the case of Chaubet, Pondark, Lascaux, Pet Merle, and Altamiro. I'm not going to put all the pictures. I am just a few. And in fact, I'm going to divide this. Hmm. I'm thinking how to divide this. Or no, not divide. I'll just. Paleolithic. Uh... Willendorf uh, Venus of Willendorf 
Venus soft le spure spure grimaldi brass and powy um, this one i'm going to do a copy based on edit because it is too big i want to cut this part Bass and Poe, and let's see what was. Venus of Lausel. That one is the relief. So I'm going to put this one. Um, I'm thinking how to make this know that what one is each one. Well, whatever. Um, I think I'm going to let it like this, even. Maybe it's not very clear, or maybe at the end I can just put a list of the pictures. Because when I was thinking this, I thought in just adding after saying the name was, well, unexpected things can happen. I'm going to put a picture. Hmm. I want to put picture of the of this this um I think this is why maybe another picture. Okay, this and then the cave art.
At the end, just going to put two pictures. And that's all. This and that. Um, in big ones. Or not. I don't know. This is the first time I'm doing uh, this, at least with this intention I'm having of making it a video. Now oh, what's happening? Oh, hello, Suthi. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't know this. I'm going fine. I am doing this PowerPoint of the art. And after this, just talk a little bit about mythology and then I will be finished. I think I'm going to do in both. Uh, like two separate ones. On this one. So this one here, uh, what's the two bed? I think two bed. Here and this one. I don't know if doing this or I think I'm just going to do like this. I don't know. Probably I let it rest and think more about how to do this. But for now I'll be happy with finishing this. Paleolithic and Paleolithic. Next one, Neolithic. This one can must be divided in two. Prehistoric art, Neolithic. Neolithic humans learned agriculture and lived. Yeah, this is the word I was thinking before, but I didn't remember. And livestock, sedentaries, paintings, schematizes, sim symbolic religious motifs, but also geometric and figures of animals and humans. Mm. Sculpture, plus their schools are very interesting. Late studies say that they were to remember the dear ones. There was also the culture of company form bases. Other examples are the petroglyphs or Gal of Galicia. Um, for this, more pictures. Neolithic, one painting. One that is a good example. I think, uh, I think this one is a good example. No, this, no. This one. This one is a good example. This hunting scene from Albacete. This is from Spain. And what things about the sculpture? Hmm. Okay. Plaster school. The base uh, 
and I think I'm going to let it like this because this one is well I can put maybe that one just because it is something different uh, I can put that like I'm going to I'm going to put it here because I don't want too many no yes better I'm going to put new one just adding this because it is something different but I want to be very very quick in this But pin different manifestation, I just put it. And then this base and this cluster school. Okay, this is Neolithic. How is everything going? It's going fine. Not very long to finish. How are you going? Architecture. Uh, one moment. I didn't put this title of score. These are fine. Neolithic architecture, they appeared as the consequence of sedentariness. The first two images are examples of homes. However, the most important in this moment are the megalithic constructions of religious and or funerary character, as the many years, dolmens and cromlets, being the most famous, the cromlets of Stonehenge. Also, it is good to name both wood and many things. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to put everything. Probably I'm going to put three. Also, probably I will just use two. Architecture. So examples of houses. I think this is the example of house. Um. Example of houses, now what more? Megalithic construction of religion and funerary character as the menhirs, dolmens, and cromlet. This is the menhir. This is the dolmen. and cromless in here Stonehenge also I had better pictures of Stonehenge and I'm going to check these other pictures um no, not here um, let's see what has happened No, if I don't find them very quick, I use search for for any random picture. Mm. Okay, this one. I think a better picture is something like this. Or like this. I like this one, but I need to cut it because too much empty space in this. Okay, then I'm going to the to the first here.
just going to edit quickly. Still too much empty space. Okay, this is over. So I'm formatting and I go to the metal eights now. Next one, medal eight. Medal eight divided in copper, bronze, and iron. Small figures of bronze or gold. An example is the Trunhol Sung Chariot. Hallstatt, this is the Central European culture. As examples, I've added the Stratbeck Chariot, a necklace, and dollars. Latini, this culture was influenced by the Mediterranean cultures and it is also known as cells, whose art is very decorative. Metal Age. And here, more pictures. Metal age. I'm thinking how oh. well the trunk hole, this one I'm going to add it. And I think I'm going to add one for Halstead and one for Latin. So I'm adding three for each one, three for, well, this one has four, also this one is very primitive. Okay, three for each one is, oh, it's fine. The, this is the throne hall, throne chariot. Then the uh, what Hallstatt's it is the Stratberg chariot. I think this picture is better. It's amazing that something like this was made at these times. Metal age from like five thousand. Well, from present, will it will be seven thousand? Seven thousand years before present, around that I think. Um, start with chariot, a necklace, and daggers. Let's see. I'm not going to put everything. This is nice. I think better put the dollars. This is more interesting. And then for the others, 
I said. Um, art is very decorative, okay? So just going to put something. This cup on Roman third. Romano 30 mirror. Mm, I think I'm just going to put this and this. And that's all. Okay, Metal Ages, done. And then, next one. This little extra, Iberian Peninsula. Okay, the, this... The division. Perfect. <clears throat> Restoric art. Story art. Iberian Peninsula. Iberian Peninsula. In the peninsula, there are three cultures worth mentioning with an extra. This extra is the Balearic Islands. Uh, Argar advanced in the creation of settlements, but the most interesting things are the burials inside places and also the jewelry. Tartessos. The most interesting here are the steels and the jewelry, as the treasure of Carambolo, treasure of Evora, and treasure of Alicedo. Uh, I'm going to check pictures one moment. So our guard, uh, I know already what I'm going to put here. Uh, about our pesos. I'll put like a tr one of these big treasure things. This one. I'll put that one. And about Iberos. Here mostly sculptures, I guess. One for Argar, one for Tartesos. Artesos, I am only going to add this one. Well, I could add a steel also. Yes. This uh, one steel. I'm going to want to put it in order and treasure. So this the steel, the first. And then next ones, Iberos. The most important important pieces of the Iberos are the sculpturic ones, as the Dama de Elche, Dama de Baza, Dama of Perente, and Bicha de Balazote. It is also worth mentioning the Citanias, fortified cities, and Castros, fortified towns. Balearic Islands, as an extra, the known as 
Talajotic culture build constructions are the Talajot towers of circular plant. Other constructions are the navetas, monumental tombs, and taulas, get stone tables. So just the same. One for the Iberos, one for the Balearic. For the Iberos, probably I'll put three pictures. Um... In order, the Madelce. Dama de Baza, or this one, no, this one, and the other, this one. This one is very weird. Okay, it's fine like this. And then the Balearic. Talayot and Naveta. This order. Yes, just going to put this and this. And that's all. Well, this is the tabla. In fact, I will just put one. Yes, just going to put this one. And that's all. I, will, I prefer to just put one. Okay, so it is finished, but before finishing this, I'm going to do um, a list of the artworks. Well, restore it. Oh, a list of the artworks appearing in this presentation. List of the pictures. Uh, introduction. Evolution of human. Uh, those uh, two pictures. Um, Paleolithic. Um, this is. Tons, two pictures, um, Venus of Willendor, uh, Venus of Lausel, and Venus of Russian Poi, but I want to see Willendor, Lausel, Brassen Poi, Venus of Brassen. Oh, going to check Brassen. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, and then the paintings here are the Daubet font dark. Yes. Just a little correction and Altamira. This is the Paleolithic. The ne Neolithic.
This painting is from Albacete. Neolithic. Okay, I think like this is going to be understood. And this is what the plaster school and the company for base. Pedro clips. Pedro clips. That is the Neolithic. Oh, and more. Uh, Menir, Dolmen, Domblet, Tone, and um, Metal A. Um, Rundholm, 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 Rundariot. Uh, what more? The Strat... Um, Stratberg Chariot uh, Halstad Lagers and now Penny Glasses too I have with them, yes Iberian Peninsula Argar Ceramic uh, Tom um, Tarteso Stele Stele of the Moon um, No, not this Still of the moon, and this is the Carambolo treasure. Yes, Tartes still of the moon, Tarteso Jasuri of uh, Carambolo treasure, and Maybe I should divide this because Yes, I'm going to divide it. Start this. Ah, I don't know. Um, just Iberian. Dama de Elche, Dama de Bata. I think it is like this. Yes. And then Balearic. And this one is the Navo Naveta. Else to Don's Naveta. Else to Don's Naveta. Okay, so this is finished. And now, the last part, just a bit quick. Last part is about mythology in these times. Well, I have read the whole article here and also more, more things. So I'm going 
I'm not going to be reading uh, anything in this text, maybe just the in pictures, but I'm just going to focus on the picture. So I have a skin here divided in Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic and Metal Ages. And it's going to be some kind of progression. So starting in Paleolithic, characteristic of the religion or mythology that supposedly it is believed that they uh, practice it. Symbols of fecundity as the Venus statues, like this one, or uh, I'm going to put it here, or these ones. What does what, what do these sculptures uh, represent? Mm, it is not uh, it is not known for certain, obviously, because we are talking about prehistoric times. So there, this means that nothing is written. So we don't have we don't, we don't know what they uh, they represent exactly. But studying mythology, you realize that the old, uh, well, the first civilization like Egyptian, like Mesopotamia, they were uh, polytheistic religions, like they had many gods. So most likely the religion of the prehistoric peoples also, also are, is uh, polytheistic. I'll, I'll reach that part. So, um, coming back to what this uh, representation of what we call Venus, but it is like a woman, maybe this representation of fertility, maybe they are goddesses, or maybe they are just fetishes. I'm going to translate, but I think it's called like that. Fetish, fetishes, yes. Uh, belief, belief in spirits, summonings, gods, uh, pagan gods and goddesses. So the belief in the the spirits, cult to the sun, uh, paintings of the sun with rays. I haven't researched about that prehistoric sun paintings. Let's see. If Maybe something like this, some petroglyphs, prehistoric art. That reminds me to the Amarna times in Egypt, uh, when the cult to Aten. So yeah, something like this, I, I guess. Cult of the sun, paintings of the sun with rays. Um, Burials with funerary rites, uh, born of the body because they think that if not, the soul escapes the bod the dead body and will haunt the living. So they had a kind of uh, belief in afterlife. It is um, something that is questionable. Like it is not very sure that it happened. They practice it corporal uh, body decoration. And it means Animes mean that the things are alive, like mm, trees, uh, not trees, that is not a good example, like the stones or the, the objects are alive, are alive. Experience of ecstasy, um, another word I don't know. And this, well, I, I don't know if it is like that, but well, well. this, ex, uh, personal experience with deities. This is like, well, if if you have watched these streams I have done these days for playing Far Cry Primal, these examples are very well represented in there. Uh, this ecstasy experience is like um, they get some drugs and they have hallucination, and this is like ecstasy experience. And I I also read that the ones who had this ecstasy experience like this personal connection or communication with the deities maybe were the epileptic people so when they were having a epileptic crisis crisis uh, so this is the interpretation they they did then paintings uh provide 
good look in the hunting so this kind of paintings is for good luck when i'm going to hunt uh, possible cult to the cavern bear the bear of the cavern i have read that this is uh pretty much not true but anyway it's interesting to to know just as curiosity uh, the bear of caverns or cavern bear i guess cave, cave bear it's like very big bear much bigger than current bears uh, possible cannibal ins. Uh, it is not sure if it is religion or feeding. This is another thing that is represented in Far Cry drama. Since one of the tribes is uh, practices the cannibalism, and religion probably polytheistic, just the same as the fierce historic uh, cultures. So a summary. Uh, symbols of fecundity like the these uh, woman statues not sure if they are goddesses not sure if they are fetishes belief in spirits shamanism cult to the sun uh, burials and funerary rites mm, involving burning the the dead uh, body decoration animals like things are alive experience of ecstasy personal experience with deities paintings that provide good look to the hunting possible cool to the cave bear possible cannibalism not sure if religion or aliment or feeding and religion probably polytheistic just the same as the fierce historical cultures then moving to the mesolithic mesolithic is a transition between paleolithic and neolithic just here mentioning uh, burials, separating, young and old. Uh, rituals of um, over age, not sure how it is said, in, how this expression will be said. My idea of that it's like coming of an age, if you understand what I mean, like when they are going to transition between being. Um, teenager and adult then they have a kind of ritual this is common even in the first and um, in the first civilization like egyptian and greek so a ritual for the coming of age and uh, decoration in tombs then in the neolithic many things here um with Neolithic, uh, agriculture, uh, the farming, harvesting happens, and this also makes that the mythology or religion, the rituals change a bit. So there is a, calen a ritual calendar centered in the harvest. There are praise for good harvest, celebration for the season of harvest, and um, as they become sedentary there are uh, the social classes start to be formed so there is an arist spiritual aristocracy with wizards uh, missionaries monarchs there are uh, and also rituals with megalithic constructions the megalithic constru constructions are like this the menhir dolmen cromlets So what is this? Um, veneration of the ancestors, rituals of the sun at the moon, especially with this one. Uh, burials uh, and the burials uh, show the inequality, the social inequality. Uh, as I have said before, they become sedentary and the social classes start to get divided. So. In the burials, just the same as happened um, in the in the next civilizations, the the rich have 
a better burial than the poor. And I have just noticed that this has an H here. Okay, I'm going to change this picture. <laughs> I think this is from the History Channel or something like that. I just noticed this H. Anyway. Uh, so I was saying, veneration of the goddess, the Greek goddess, and I also found this word Kadalhoyuk. I'm going to search this. Kadalhoyuk. This. Um, it is like a place. Um. I don't really remember why I put this in this section, but I think I, I read something related with... Okay, yes. Uh, in this place, there were found uh, female statuettes, so something like this. Uh, realized in different materials like marble, and uh, these are different kinds of stones. Uh, represent a female deity of the kind of mother goddess. And there was a um, a male god. The number of female god female statuettes was um, very superior, and this god doesn't appear. Uh, well, so okay, this is the reason why I put this here. And then there is veneration to animals like the bear, the leopard, and the cattle. So, a summary of the Neolithic, a ritual calendar around harvest, praise for good harvest, celebration for the season of harvest. Um, there are, um, because, seden because they become sedentary, then the mm, social classes start to be created and there is inequality. So, there is a spiritual aristocracy with wizards and such. There are rituals in megalithic constructions, veneration to the ancestor, rituals to the sun and the moon. The burials show the social inequality and then the veneration of the great goddess like this one and veneration of animals like bear, leopard, leopard and cattle. And then finally in the metal age mm, with the creation of metal tools um just some some small differences and this um well i don't i don't go too fast so distinction between the sun that is the sky and the underworld animals are um mediators i'm not sure if it is like that are mediators okay Animals are mediators between the physical world and the spiritual world. And journey is for transformation and fertility. Start to be uh, the mummification of corpses and the paganism. So, what I wanted to say before is that here is like the development of religion or mythology since the beginning of the times until what will be the first great mythologies like the Egyptian, Mesopotamian, Greek and such. So as you have seen um, mythology, religion, it is very um, connected to the lifestyle of the peoples. Um, just in Paleolithic, they just were hunting and such, so uh, they did paintings for having good luck. Then they, in Neolithic, they set and start harvesting, so they think in rituals for the harvesting. And then this megalithic construction with ritual to the sun, the moon, the goddess. And I think this is this is enough. So here I finish this topic uh, from the geological times, geological eras 
to play story and play historic art. Next week, I will be talking about African art. So, African art for the week for the next weekend, and in the meanwhile, I will be doing some other things. So, thank you very much for watching this, and see you the next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.